Hello, 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 hello. There we go. Hello, everybody. How how we doing? How we doing today? So um, things are happening. Things are I happening. need the information. <laughs> Give me the information. <laughs> Come on, information. <laughs> this is so creepy. It's so creepy. <laughs> I haven't even drank. I haven't even drank yet. <laughs> hey, Halloween cup. Oh, that's hey. cool. oh, I thought that was a really cool mug, but it's just fake. It's definitely no, it's, a mug. It's a, it's a mug. What do you mean? Is it fake? Oh, is it, no, is it like ceramic? No, it's not ceramic. Uh, the outside is like plastic, but the middle is uh, stainless steel. Oh, okay. No, it's actually steel. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I thought it was like a plastic, like, yeah. shitty thing. Oh, that's cool. No. Well, I mean, the outside is kind of like molded plastic. What do you mean? I told you whiskey with water. Whiskey with water. How? That's way too full. Of it's, it's, water. it's, it's, it's not whiskey with water. Uh, it's Jack and Coke. Gotcha. Uh. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. You did a mixer. Uh, you have to yeah. help me choose which uh, 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 scotch I want. So, Doxy's actually a scotch drinker. So, Doxy, you have to tell me which one I want. I have this one, which is 12 year double cask mm -hmm. matured. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, I like double cask. This is Belvini, uh, 12 oh. year double cask, but this is uh, a whiskey. I had oak that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the whiskey oak and sherry oak ba uh, barrels. Okay. Okay. And what kind of barrels for the other one? For the, um, what kind of casks? It actually doesn't specifically say, I don't think. Uh, no, American oak and okay. sherry oak. American oak. Okay. Um, this one is Glenfiddich, 15 year. That's Glenn good. Glenfiddich, yeah, 15 year. Glenfiddich, and you know. 18 it. is better, but. Hold on. That's and then. Like, really expensive. Then 16 year, uh, Lagavulin. Glenfiddich, which is, Phil. Which is, this is one of the original six um, uh, uh, distilleries out of Scotland. So, this is actually one of the first distilleries to make um, scotch out of Scotland. But Save the rest of that for the next time we can hang out because I want to try it. It's smoky. It, 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 Josh made a face when I made him drink it. I like that though. Yeah, it's sm it's so yeah. smoky. Josh is like, it's I don't know what smoky, smoky means, and then you tried it, and you were like, "It tastes you know like it, means? it tastes like the wood chips. Like if you took yeah. a smoke wood chip and you put it like the mystique whatever flavor, and you put it in your mouth and you just suck on it. Oh, it was too smoky for me. I love. I drank it. Love but. whiskey is just tree juice. It's so good. I like it with a cigar. I haven't had a cigar in like. Oh, a year. I'm going with Glenfiddich. Glenfiddich. Yeah. Yes, the Glenfiddich. Um, uh, Jay, the other ones I mentioned were Avalor uh, and Belvini, both of those 12 year double wood. And the last one was uh, Lagavulin, uh, 16 year. The well, Len, the. the 15 year Glenfiddich. What was the one that you told me the, the 12 year, the um, Lavulin? No. No, no, no. Uh, Belvini, 12 year double wood? Belvini, that was good. Yeah, that yeah, shit yeah. was smooth. Th that's my go to hell. because it's super smooth for most people that aren't like uh, big drinkers, uh, yeah. big like whiskey drinkers, scotch drinkers. That was a good one for just like a splash of water. You know, I have Johnny Walker black. It's not that great. Yeah. I always take a splash of warm water in my whiskey. It makes it taste amazing. Yeah, Jameson on the rocks. There you go. Um, uh, Negative Two Charisma is uh, uh, an old friend of mine, so he actually also does D and D streams. So. Oh, hey, Negative Two Charisma. There you go. Um, oh, yeah. And this is Doxy. She does D and D streams too on her channel. Yeah. So, there you go. Um, uh, all right, so. Back to what we were doing, RP stuffs. So, um, uh, she, uh, what was the last thing that was said before we got excited? R or you had suggested um, uh, using and rubies. listing the rubies, and she yeah. was surprised that you were so honest about it. And then she made a comment about um, your sister having a spell on you, but like you know, playing word spell on you, and um, uh, mentioned the shadow magic thing again. And I think it was, were you about to say something there, Ron? Um, I just said, I'm afraid I rather enjoy it. Oh, afraid I rather enjoy it. Okay. Um, and so, so kind of go back to the logistical question that you were asking there uh, before. Um, she says, so, so who's in charge? She says, with an endeavor like this, uh, it would not be me in charge. Uh, handling the, as I said beforehand, removal of the head of the snake, that of course would be my doing. I would be the one overseeing such an operation, but handling large-scale battle like that that requires somebody with more experience in the right field or somebody with a similar enough field in the right sponsorship 
She lets that one linger. That is what I am here for. You are muted. I thought you were being awfully quiet. The right sponsorship. Hmm. Well, and cojones. Large scale battle is something that takes a particular type of finesse. Something that is less about the way that you fight individuals and more about the way that you fight on the scale. Before and you continue on, I want you to understand that it's going to be Magister Heathgart that is going to be put in charge of this task. Now, I don't know if you know much about Magister Heathcart, but yes. um, uh, let's just say that nepotism has done him well. Sure, has it. his soldiers have certainly cut their teeth uh, over in the lands to the east, but nobody really cares about the internal squabbles of the chaotic mess that they call a deer, okay? I'm talking about an actual war people that have actual struggles. Doesn't really take after his father, huh? Uh, much like those that are raised um, different from their parents. Parents do everything they can. They struggle through life, uh, put in every ounce of effort they can to try to instill a better future for their children. Unfortunately, what they end up do producing is children that are um, what they struggled against to get into their positions. Disappointments. Well, what I was going to suggest the right sponsorship is the obviously what you're referring to there, and that's I understand. More what I was going to suggest is that I think with the right communication, if Bob Moe could be convinced. Bob Mo could be convinced, I think he might be willing to adjust. I think Bob Mo would be convinced if all the leaders' throats were slit in a single evening. I think Bob Mo would be convinced after the fact of that. I don't think he would be convinced during or before, given his principles. What I'm suggesting is with the right communication, Bobo might be convinced to shift that leadership away from Magister Heathcart. I wasn't sure who was going to be put in, but with it being Magister Heathcart, my understanding, based on what you've said and based on what I've heard from other sources, is that he is liable to get his men killed at every turn quite the possibility and as I say we're not going to succeed without the right facts and the right people backing us this idea of emotion would fail without the facts behind it personally I would have just patched things up as they were and moved on it was functioning it would have been easier it would have been but since you've thrown things into a bit of a chaotic mess let's stir it a bit see what we can have rise to the top do you have a particular person in mind i can put you in touch with several moissanites who will have people in mind mm, for the military operation though not for the assassination presumably yes correct ah. i mean not to throw the name around again but uh <laughs> if Savant Heathcard were around, he would be my first choice, obviously. I just want to remind you, Will, um, about what we found out last game, because I know it was a couple weeks ago, Ooh, about Bumbo. Um, him, Bumbo? He's never actually met... Bu is it, is it Bob, 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 Bob Mo? Bumbo uh, he's a legend of... B -O, yeah. Bumbo. Bum Bumbo. I have B-O-B-M-O. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah so we have B -O -B -M -O. Bob Bob Let me check my notes. Let me check my notes. Yeah, it's on the map. It's, it's on the map. B-O-B-M-O. B-O-M-B-O is what I have in my notes here. 
I think, well, on your map, it's B-O-B-M-O. Then I, then I type one in my notes. <laughs> B-O-B-M-O. Ty, Bob Bob. My, Bob my Bob. face. This Sorry, is man. what I look like. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> Sorry, you were saying, Josh? I was saying that he never actually sat down or talked to any of the no uh, royalty, and this might be the person that could actually arrange an, uh, a meeting. Yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to remind you because it no, was no, that's, And that's kind of what I was getting at with the with the right communication for Bob Mo. Um, but essentially, Oscar's going to just kind of scratch his neck and just say, as I say, Savant Heathguard would have been my first choice, just knowing his actual preparatory skill and knowledge of that particular area. Um, but he has no, dedication I, to precision. Yes, precisely. I don't know anyone with his precision, but that type of precision is exactly what we would need. Do you know of anyone who would fit that bill? Unfortunately, I've worked with largely smaller. Uh, groups and and primarily focused as a well I do that's good news who would you suggest the problem is they've already been claimed the person I think would be best for the job is somebody who actually has a lot of experience fighting and winning against Jovance they've actually taken tons of land from Jovance time after time battle after battle year after year but then unfortunately decided to retire their life as a commander and then chose to have be enlisted or, or uh, enlist themselves proffer their services back to the place that chaotic mess called a deer to some small little fledgling city state um out there as their high general there is a man by the name of general leon jaeger he could handle this battle. He has dedication to the safety and well-being of the soldiers and the soldiers of his enemies. He has the heart to make the decisions that are too hard for others to make. And he also has the forethought to know when to strike and when to step back. All along the while, he's willing to give his opponents an offer. They may surrender knowing who is in charge of the army they're about to face and knowing his reputation and to, at any point in time should they snub that offer he's willing to accept, accept it moving forward it's known to the soldiers it's known to the commanders it's known to anybody who comes up against him it's really difficult to continue telling your soldiers to fight and die when they know salvation is being offered on the other side if only they had the right leader on their own side. More than a few heads have rolled because of this. Save lives. That is annoyingly precisely what we need. Let me have a shot at him. Do we have a shot at actually collecting the um, uh, the general? Let me have a shot at him. I... I don't know... My apologies, Chris Ellen. I just underestimated you and insulted you in my mind. I saw you as the reputation that you're known for outside of the lands that accepts jewels openly and more of, uh, and less of has what you are, which is a grand diplomat. None taken. I don't think he'd be interested in, in you. He's never married. He's never had children. And he's quite um, up there in age. I'm not offering my body. I'm aware. Ah. May I ask a relatively direct question? And Oscar will take a massive swig of whiskey before he does and places it down on the table. How would we get there? Do you know the way? And would it be possible for us to do so and communicate with him in a way that might get him back here? Even if just for a time. Um, yeah, I can answer all those questions. Um, head uh, east, northeast. Um, uh, do I know the way? In fact, east, northeast. 
And <laughs> what was the last one? Do you know a way we can get in contact with him and bring him back here, even if just for a short time? I believe he sits nice and comfortably inside the castle or some manor outside of it. He, the name of the city is, um, uh, Kurtz, Kurtz, Kurtzen, Kurtzfell, Kurtz, it's something along those lines. Um, Hurts all. Hurts all. It's um, Valerie, I think, is the name of their their fledgling nation. Uh, okay. And is this a course of action you would recommend on your vast experience? If we had General Jaeger, he would be very capable of handling the battle. <sighs> I don't think he'd be a fan of the tactics that I had suggested using prior to that battle, though. Truth be told. Few people will be. Have you ever fought magical beasts? Uh, no, actually. In fact, no. Strategically, there's a specific way to deal with each kind of beast. Each one has their own resistances, each one has their own methods their way of life, just like Yvonne's. There's an appropriate action to take to kill those types of magical beasts, just like there is Yvonne's. I don't disagree with your method, though I usually would, because I believe that it is a correct method for Yvonne's. And I believe that other people can be convinced of that too. Well, it seems like there are two places that needed to be visited. One of them actually sends you to the south. Sorry, sorry, oh, sorry. let me just double check the map real quick. One of them sends you um, uh, directly east of here, here to the south. Um, the other one very east of here and a good, uh, a good bit to the north. If only but I we had I some you... form of shadow magics to quickly transport us to a location far to the east. <laughs> Oscar will say, and then take a swig of whiskey and then put it down and just say. Speaking of which, and um, Chris Allen will head to the kitchenette and whip up anything laying around that has electrolytes in it. <laughs> just food, just good food. And uh, yeah, and go knock on the closet where Laszlo is and <laughs> slide it in for him. Uh, take here. the bucket, empty it, bring it back. I'm trying to be quiet. Yeah, here's some, here's some uh, Oscar will hand, uh, uh, like, he'll go and grab out of his bag a, just a uh, water skin and, and pass that to you as well. Chris he'll say no mish. Laszlo. He'll say no mish, thank you. <laughs> and he goes, I thought I was onto something. <laughs> and close the door. <laughs> in in no mish, Oscar will actually just say back, rest easy. <laughs> um. So anyways, you, uh, do you press this matter anymore? Um, you the, oh, the shadow, the shadow magic. Mm -hmm. um, no, Oscar's gonna leave it cheeky for now and just. Uh, She'll wait as you guys take your turns leaving the room and whatnot. She'll actually yeah. sit back and uh, raise her glass and have another swig and, and whatnot, yeah. or sip, I should say, yeah. um, uh, and whatnot, and enjoy just kind of the the relaxation, thinking, yeah. looking down at the map occasionally, so on and so forth. I imagine a few minutes pass before you two find your way to the table. Does one come before the other one? Oscar would be back pretty quick. He just went to hand over a, a water skin. And yeah, I made him like a things. sandwich or some yeah. shit. Uh, Oscar would sit down and then take another swig and just say, so what do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? I'd drink for a question, right? Um, uh, she'll smile at that. She says, um, well, there's a reason why I found myself here this evening, isn't it? It's <laughs> uh, keeping up on knowing what needs to be known. Fair enough. And getting a little bit of a drink in while doing so. Did you meet Tristan? Have I met Tristan? I don't think I have. Doxy did. No. Um, I haven't. I Kika. believe Chris Ellen has. Kika! Are we playing Star Wars? <laughs> Sorry, I got away for Doxy on this one. That's okay. Come on, hey. I can't pick you up off that or I'll fuck everything up. You have to get up on your own. 
This is why to handle cats, what you do is you leave inside your, your office, like right inside one of the drawers of your desk, a rifle. And then when the cat oh, behaves, You stop it! Take a look. Jesus. Okay. Oh my God, Scott. Oh, All right, God. just anyone who's watching has not been here before. He's not being serious. He he stayed up like all night to try to rescue a cat that he doesn't like this that ran outside of his house. He's full news. of it. I hate cats. <laughs> the, the cat that I own vomited on the carpet again today. Okay, it was in the morning. It was whining. So I was like, oh yeah, here's some food for you. I get it food. I make myself breakfast. <laughs> oh, so it was Laszlo. Yeah. <laughs> your cat is just Laszlo. That's the uh, problem. <laughs> God, I hate cats. Vile, nasty, smelly creatures. Don't even know how to poop outside. Dogs smell so much worse than cats. Only First her breath. All, Only my all. dog's breath. First of all. And, and for the record, for the record, my daughter. I love dogs. When, when, when we went upstairs to get, smelly. when I went upstairs because we were getting our liquor and whatnot, my daughter is still awake, not even five years old yet, still awake at almost midnight because she apparently has daddy's sleeping problem, and and she's cuddling in her bed with a dog. And when I went in there to say, Rory, I should probably shut the light off for you because she has like a little nightlight on, but it's like small. Um, she's like, no, 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 good girl. She's so comfortable. Look, she's cuddling on me. She loves me because the dog is legit legs and head on her legs and lap or whatever. And, and she's like, don't, 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 because then she'll leave. And I was like. All right, fine, because you're so damn cute. And so she continued to just continue that is super petting cute. the dog and playing with her. And I'm like, I'm not saying I don't like dogs. I fucking love dogs. But no, Doxy's, Doxy's right, though. Dogs, dogs belly. stink. No. Especially if they get any type of wet on them. They no. get, they, mm, oh, I don't mind the smell of wet dog. Oh, well, then that, that's, that's. It's vile. No, you know what's vile? A cat piss, cat shit, cat vomit, cat fur. Yeah. I can't stand boy cats to be unfair. Guys, like spraying. That I grew up in a house with like 15 animals, right? Yeah. Mathis too. Actually, no, legit. Yeah. Mathis's mom would rescue like would rescue like like eight or nine ducks at a time, like tons of animals. So let me just tell you, rabbits smell worse than both cats and dogs. Oh, rabbits are gross. Rabbit. And they rabbits. shed like crazy they shed, like, too. Smell way worse. I had, I had ferrets yeah, too. Rabbits. Rabbits like. I rabbits and ferrets yeah. stink. I don't know, I don't so know if Canadian rabbits they're are worse vermin. than uh, Iowan rabbits, but uh, <laughs> yeah, the Canadian rabbits—they're just. Uh, I will say, whatever uh, rabbits we had were the smelliest animal I've ever experienced <laughs> in my life, uh, and those like we. I kept think you just needed animal. to clean the cage more often, we or something. Literally, we literally cleaned it all. Like we, we lived in a house with fifteen animals. We took care. Like it was part of our chores so, every so day. So when I had a ferret, I was a part of like a um, uh, environmental like group I was about to go to college for like e ecology and stuff like that so I actually used all biodegradable um like bedding and stuff like that and I had to change it at least once a day sometimes three times a day and it always smelled bad because I didn't buy like the, the pellets that you typically use to like reduce yeah. the smell because I was like look at me I'm so hippie with my long hair and loving of nature which is a good thing of course but oh boy did it make the ferret smell so I kind of like ferret smell Hey, listen. To each their own. I like yeah, dogs. I know. I know. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, let's go back. Um, uh, where were we? She talked about the uh, Leon. Um, oh, yeah, I, have you met Tristan? I have to wait for Doxy yeah, to come back. Yeah. Doxy, she asks him while you're within earshot, have you met Tristan yet? Which one was Tristan? It's the cousin, uh, right? Yeah, the one that was like waiting for you to dance, so like ask questions while you oh. were trying to like lead away. Ah, sure did. Yeah, she, so she was asking that to um, mm. to Oscar, and he's like, I don't believe it. She's like, sure did, from the other room. And she'll say, oh, you did. I did. Um, Tristan is actually the uh, brother of one of the uh, kings of this fledgling nation. Perhaps he can assist you in getting from one location to the other. Using magics. Whatever it is that appeases you. I, I personally find a, an extremely smooth ride um, by well-trained horses and an incredibly uh, uh, well-paid coach uh, to be magical myself. <laughs> you know, I appreciate all of that. And I appreciate all of that information. Is there anything else you'd recommend with your knowledge for us to do in terms of action, in terms of 
seeing if this plan could actually come to fruition. As I say, I'm looking to get facts so we can back up the emotion. I don't want to be driving this with emotion. Just simply... Oh, you started with emotion, and when it comes to the Queen, that's how you're going to win. And since the Queen's vote is the only one that matters, all you're doing is tipping uh, the odds in your favor by continuing to... by continuing to push her various advisors in the same direction. It'll reduce the likelihood of her second-guessing her decision. So, you've already screwed up things enough. (laughs) Well... If it isn't the first time I've heard that in 10 minutes. Uh, (laughs) But my point stands and my question stands. Is there anything else you'd recommend we do? Backing it up with fact. You had plans to go north or south. You were mentioning Yovance. That's easy, of course. You were mentioning Ascaria. I suggest you stay out unless you have a very good reason to being there. We don't have any reason to be there at the moment. It's only if it comes up. Good, because you're a walking delayed blast uh, fireball waiting to go off. Yeah. So why were you looking to go to Galdaria? <sighs> That's a good question. I'm trying to remember out of game. In hopes of aid. We want them to help us fight the but fucking was it war. Just, was it just there, or were we also traveling through to another location? Because that was a Laszlo thing. I'm trying well, to, we are going to go to Galdaria go to, to Galdaria ask for then soldiers to bol- help bolster the basically. numbers. Right? Yeah. And then to Tazingendale yeah, to see if we can get them to aid us secretly. Yes. And that because they have a lot of money, right? And uh, they're also, right. they're studious and like more magics and stuff like that. And then maybe talk to the Sill. Right. Because Tazingendale. They still have are, to go underground too. That one's a long shot. And the underground, which uh, <laughs> someone mentioned doors earlier. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Don't worry. We'll get to that. Because <laughs> that's not going unnoticed. Um, Oscar will just kind of repeat that that line saying, well, we're hoping to go to Goldaria to hopefully bolster ourselves with some additional troops, but more importantly than that, kind of secretly go through to Tazingdale to hopefully get some additional bank rolling. Hmm. Trying to do so secretly, obviously, and then Laszlo had an errand as well. Goldaria um, for archers, Tazingdale for, you're saying, financing and... Uh, steel. Yes. And then perhaps other endeavors as well. Yes. Well, you're going to have to prioritize your task here. Are you looking to get, gather the support so you can go and approach Leon about what soldiers he'll be leading? Or are you looking to go get the world class general and tell that to those that are going to be providing soldiers to serve under him? Well, this is a question. What would you recommend based on your knowledge and based on your contacts within Baldaria? What would they be more open to? Large-scale combat is not my forte. Fair enough. And I believe I owe you a drink. (laughs) And he will pour her more as well. Uh, Not that she's been drinking too heavily on it, but he'll uh, he'll pour a little more for her as well on that. And then we'll kind of lean back and say, fair enough. You can't make your way everywhere. No. But there are other locations that you could potentially go to as well. If you're going to be going through Galdaria, just outside of Galdaria, in Paradell itself, there's an interesting place that you might want to swing by. Ravenhold, uh, it goes by. I have uh, in my employ um, somebody that uh, might um, be able to make you a few contacts there as well. Uh, I would I would right. toss her name out, but unfortunately the one that I sent to spy on, uh, sorry, the one that um, uh, I sent her to spy on is currently uh, sharing with the world the contents of his gallbladder. Delightful. So, in terms of Ravenhold, in terms of finding this contact, how would we go about that? Which contact? My apologies. The one in Ravenhold. Ah, uh, uh, no, Ghost is here. Oh, she's, Ghost is here. Gotcha. Yeah, she's in town. Um, okay. She can arrange contracts uh, at Ravenhold for you. Um, the reason why I think it's a good idea to speak to those at Ravenhold is because things that aren't willing to be traded because of either international commerce laws or they just don't like your face. Uh, Ravenhold, they have a little bit less, you know, uh... Integrity? Yeah. They're willing to take coin if you're willing to pay it. There may be a bit of a surcharge, but rewards and whatnot. 
That's the usual. Okay, fair enough. So we should speak to Ghost then. Um, oh, um, strange question. Uh, who do you worship? So that is a very strange question. Um, I, I don't personally. Any particular idiopan or? I don't know what that means. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like in uh, real meta, life. Meta, meta, Pantheon. Meta, I.e. Pantheon. Pantheon. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. It's, a, it's okay. a, um, uh, ideological Pantheon. Yeah. Ah, okay. 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 Sorry. So, if so, you so, said so, if you said the word separately, would have yeah. been totally fine. Be fine. There, so no... gr group of gods. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, none in particular for me. Uh, I Laszlo does. Lady Winifred. Ah, huh, that's fine. Uh, Chris Ellen, she says, calling to the other room as you imagine you're finishing giving him the sandwich. Hi. Um, any particular uh, god or gods that you worship? I forget her name. It's the pleasure lady. Oh, Cr uh, Kraylene. 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 That's yeah. right. Kraylene, why do you ask? So long as it's not Lady Aravel, you shouldn't have any issues. Oh, you're slick. I like that. Okay. I don't get oh. it. Yeah, that's fine. That's a that's a not for us. I think, Doxy. That is a that is a for the. For the fans, uh, I am a fan. Well, all right. For the for the hardcore fans. Then. Well, if you're if you're a fan, join Scott's OnlyFans. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> one day. One day. It's actually uh, uh, OnlyFans.com/slash/zerodoxy. Yeah. Yeah. You can find all the pictures of me doing all the poses. Yeah. Even that one. You know what I'm talking about. Um. <laughs> This month Oscar is Goth Rose. Month. I dress up like a uh, sexy goth chick. I put on this uh, wig of mostly dark brown hair with a little bit of blonde. I uh, make my skin a little bit placid. And oh boy, the way I look in those outfits, I'm just saying. Somehow masking it. the beard as well. And let's just say that's the impressive part. Yeah, well, you know. Mm -hmm. You glue it down and then you put foundation. I've been watching makeup shows. You glue it down. <laughs> and you Dude, put Treadmill's not here, is he? <laughs> Holy shit. Treadmill's not here, is he? Oh my god, I gotta scroll up for a second. Oh god. Oh no. Okay, no treadmill's not here. Treadmill's Don't clip it and put it in Lost no. Initiative Discord. No. Don't clip it and put it in Lost Initiative Discord. No. Listen, oh. Treadmill, oh Jesus. Treadmill has oh, sent me, um, uh, Jesus, Joey. Uh, Treadmill has sent me uh, some interesting pictures for my birthday. Oh boy. <sighs> Alright, let's continue. So, one more question. I think you've given us quite a bit of information at this point. And this one is, well, no, I have two more questions. And uh, Oscar takes his first sip. Uh, first things first, do you know where Savant Heathgard is and would you be able to tell me where he was? Where Savant Heathgard is? Yes. Or was going. How do you know that he's not about? And she'll well, actually take a step. He here. She looks through your glass. <laughs> and, uh, Oscar will just say, well, we know he wasn't in the castle. Out of game drinking per questions, not, uh, sorry, sorry, in game drinking per questions, not out of game. We're being smart and re responsible. Yeah. Twitch gods, please don't punish us from on high. Go ahead. Uh, Oscar will just say, well, we know he isn't in the capital. <clears throat> Perhaps he was sent on some task by the queen. Perhaps he was. And perhaps you might know where that task would be. The second part of that question is, would you tell me if you did? You can say no to that. That would be an appropriate answer. You have a piece, don't you? It's a lovely mirror in the corner. Oscar takes a swig and just says, I believe you uh, are looking for some information. could ask look, him he'll look he'll look to the 
glass in her uh, in her hand. You could speak to him. What do you know? We know what he knew before when he made the peace. That he was going somewhere. That you and Lady Arcium might know where he was going. And that it was very likely dangerous and he wasn't sure when or if he'd be back. But he knew that it was important. And when I asked him if he would care for us to know... He said he would leave that at yours and Lady Arcian's discretion, essentially. Why don't we be a little successful with what you've already screwed up before we go opening more pot lids? Fair enough. For another pot lid, <laughs> he'll take another swig and then put that down. Interesting that you mentioned dwarves. <clears throat> uh, Fictional creatures, are they not? Unfortunately, not. Uh, oh, what do strange. You know, what do you know about the individuals who came pleading, pleading for help from Amalta, who were turned down by the former king, that then have now joined forces with Paradel in order to try and save their land underground, uh, while still not necessarily being certain of whether or not they're going to be successful in that and are being currently used by Paradel. I She's clearly <laughs> throwing it all on the table right there, right? Yeah. She, she says, <laughs> yeah. I know their tunnels stretch deeper than my men were willing to delve. And beyond that, I can offer no more because I don't have much. If these people are honest... If they are real, if everything they say is true, this is not some sort of trick or illusion, then it would be quite the endeavor to discover whatever they've hidden, however deep it was that they, they've put it. From an information perspective, I can definitely understand that. From a people perspective, if their people are in danger or something that deep down, it's quite dangerous. I'd be curious to know what it is. As would I. Going back to my roots a little bit, I'm hoping it would be something magical. However, the people that serve under me are not without spine and a strong one at that. So if they're not willing to travel as far down as is needed to discover these answers, then perhaps it's far enough down that we don't need to worry about it in the immediate future. There are perhaps enemies that are Perhaps we could utilize it. Oh, sure. Absolutely. How many months would it take for you to find even the first town, village, uh, individual? Or How many months beast would it take to learn your than. teleportation shadow magic? I don't know what teleportation channel magic you're referring to there, Chris Allen. Further to the point of finding the town, first of all, it would be much easier if we knew how far your men had gotten down and through what location and by which means, obviously. But given the, that point and that question, how long did your men travel before they turned back? It's hard to answer that question. Things get a little dilated. From my perspective, several weeks. And from theirs? Depends on who you ask. Give us a range. They babbled a bit. Not everybody returns sound of mind several days over a week's time to several months things can get a little strange when you're removed from this world what do you mean by that precisely look about you you're comfortable here aren't you when you delve deep and you find your way into the dark dark stretches 
things get a little strange. Fair enough. You mean they couldn't tell because they didn't have a son to tell them? That would be part of it. It's also different not being around air flows and with varying... It, depending on how you travel underground. I, I've only been in a mountain. But. They did encounter a good number of those damned mushrooms. Oh. Yes, we had a very nice conversation with one before he blew up his entire home. Valuable allies also. I could implement some very strong farming technology, actually, for a newly formed nation, for instance. They were unsuccessful in communicating with them. Oh, I wasn't. We've, we've been... We have been successful in communicating. If you met one here on the surface, perhaps the ones on the surface are more capable of communicating, or at least more willing to? More willing is very, very much the likely case there. They had to permit it. Or perhaps I have skills that you refuse to acknowledge. I've never uh, uh, I downplayed the ability that you have. Only I don't because think it feels an awful lot like tonight you've done a lot of it. Well, when you're proffering advice when it comes to a military campaign, when you're used to choosing a wine to go along with uh, uh, perhaps a chicken dish and uh, various sides that might be in season, Out of respect for your sister, I'm going to excuse myself from this conversation. It's your home. So you think traveling <clears throat> underground is a waste of time? No. For the moment. I think traveling underground is a waste of this time. This time. Fair enough. <clears throat> I think for all of us, why are you so invested into the underground? What did you know? We met an individual. Uh, went by the name of Brock. Uh, he tried to kill us. Uh, was almost successful in doing so. I do not say that lightly. This is not a normal thing for me. Was almost successful in killing all three of us. He gave us information broadly about his people, that they were facing a risk and that Paradell had promised to solve that in exchange for their services. They are powerful mages, or at least he was, and he claimed that many of his people were. On the one hand, from a strategic standpoint and from a logistic standpoint, on the war front, facing more mages of varying types is dangerous especially when our Venator are trained specifically to deal with the Arcane Congress, a different type of magic introduced into that situation without proper training and without a proper initiation for the Venator is an extremely dangerous thing. Just blanket full stop from a logistics standpoint. Ignoring the logistics standpoint, Paradel has agreed to help them with something and go underground. Why? Yes, aid in battle, yes, of course, getting powerful mages on their side, but they're already doing that. What's their reason for doing it? What's their reason for pulling that in? What's that? What is their drive to do so? And beyond that, are they even following through on it? I have questions, and I suppose that curiosity is what's driving me personally towards the underground, though I can't speak for Chriselle and Laszlo. Um, speaking of Chriselle and Laszlo, as Chriselle goes past, uh, Laszlo's cupboard. She runs her hands along it and shoots healing magic inside and goes into her room. Uh, going back to her response to you, um, uh, to Oscar, she says, honestly, the way that you say logistics gives me a bit of a quiver. You've convinced me. Maybe it's that way that your brow furrows when you get serious. It really does stand out that you're a Venator. Let me say, if you can find a small group of people, and I mean small, that you can trust, I will send another one or two of my soldiers as a guide. We can try again and see if we can at least find a path. 
I believe that you're not wrong, which is why I sent people looking before. I sent them directly after those that were rejected from the throne room, so maybe the reason why they couldn't find it was because they were being toyed with and didn't know. It's something that's kept me up at night several times, but... Maybe this time we can succeed, or if it's a hefty enough of a failure, maybe at least it'll satisfy your curiosity for now. Small group of people. Now the question would be before or after we perform our other tasks. Personally, as much as I'm curious, I think we have more present. What are your thoughts? There's a war. How many miles from here? Uh, she points at your not entirely accurate uh, yeah. to scale map. Yeah. Um, she, she said, how many miles from here? How many lives are going to be lost from this? Are we really mm -hmm. willing to engage on another front for the hope of maybe finding allies that could potentially assist us? And how long would it take for us to uh, accomplish that? There are very achievable goals we have immediately before the before us. You could go diving down some rabbit hole in hopes of finding some magical cure to the disease that's plaguing all of the world. Let's just call it Paradel. Or you can put on your gloves, put on your mask, walk into the hospice, and start getting to work. I think from my record, you know where I stand. Good. Tristan will help you uh, find your way to Basso. Tristan will also help you find your way to um, his brother's little uh, town and then back home. From there, we can at the very least secure passports. Just, uh, what is it? Uh, like, um, identification. False identification for you to travel north to Gold Area. I will make sure that you have the appropriate maps and everything you need to visit the locations that you need and that the various contacts that you will meet along the way to be um, uh, put in place for you. Thank you. That's very kind. And what can I do for you? What can we do for you? Stop fucking up. For Christ's sakes, you were just supposed to shore up the border, and here we are drawing new ones. I would not have chosen the three of you, as I've said three times now this evening. But the Queen did. And I am a patriot. If it's what she wants, for Christ's sakes. Oh, she wasn't say Christ. You know, in uh, yeah. Kraylene's sake, I will, will make it happen. But that doesn't mean I have to go entirely by her terms. Wouldn't expect it. Fair enough. Well, that's what we can do for you. What can I do for you? Um, uh, for that, she raises an eyebrow and says, Oh, well, in that case... Do you just carry that spear around for looks, or do you actually know how to use it? Well, you can always find out. I would absolutely love to. Now, there is a little bit too much liquor in either of our bellies to be um, handling fully lethal weapons. Um, I agree. Yeah, so perhaps not this evening, but sometime soon. I'd like to see exactly how hard you can thrust that spear and exactly whether or not your aim is true. We can make that happen. You can actually roll an empathy check. Mm-hmm. I got to reopen up my character sheet because it closed on me. Just give me one second here. That's eh, not terrible. I'm pretty sure she's coming on to you. Yeah. Oh, he, he's... Yeah, he's just... He's going with it at this point. He's also like literally three, four, five, five whiskeys in now, I think, by my count. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's, yeah, <laughs> he's just going with it at this point. 
Okay. So um, mm -hmm. um, from there, um, she'll actually... Uh, uh, I don't think there's anything else she needs to talk to you guys about. She'll say... Tristan will be by to check. Uh, Tristan will be by to lend his aid. Wonderful. Well, we'll look forward to that, and I'll look forward to when we get to uh, put both of our skills to the test. Do you remember initiation? I've, I've heard rumor of Venator initiation. <laughs> All too well. There's not far from here a market where you can procure the goods that you need to um, make um, something to help him out. Okay. They're, uh, clo they're closed, but if you swing by there this evening and you ask Rupert, I'm, I'm sure he'd be willing to help you out. He's a patriot as well. Noted. And uh, he'll ask for the location of the market and everything. Yeah, she'll, she'll say it to you. Yeah. Well... She no, go, go ahead. Yep. Sorry. Um, so so yeah, you say what you're going to do, because I was doing yeah. a farewell. Uh, well, yeah, he's just going to be doing the same, essentially, and just saying, well, if you need anything in the interim, let me know. Okay. I'll be happy, happy to oblige wherever I can. Um, she uh, kind of gets up and uh, will make her way to the door, where I imagine you grab the door just out of yeah. gentleman list or whatever, and yeah. the fact that she's your superior on multiple fronts. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. And um, uh, she'll actually call out, uh, good luck, Laszlo, and uh, Chris Ellen. I hope you dream sweet <laughs> dreams of my sister. Oh, that's creepy. And, uh, uh, <laughs> and Laszlo's gonna try to say goodbye. <laughs> I, I, uh, no, uh, fuck it. That's <laughs> not what it sounds like when I throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Keep, keep going, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Someone clip that. I can make a. I can make an MP3 for no. you guys. <laughs> right. Could be the new sub sound. <laughs> What's more, we're feeling. Uh, listen, <laughs> I I liked that game, but I probably it's time to retire her. It's 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 been like over a year at yeah. this point. <laughs> it's time to retire Valky Valkyrie Chronicles or whatever it is, Valkyrie Chronicles. Mm -hmm. No more, Mama. <laughs> well, Priscilla, I think that went really well. Oh yes, I'm charmed. Got a lot of information. Also got a lot of mouth. Yeah. You haven't. Spent... You might be your superior normally, but we are a chosen task force. Have you spent? Have you spent much time around the barracks? I have. Have you spent much time around the barracks where the people in the barracks are being the people in the barracks and not putting on their best behavior for someone who's coming into the barracks? That was a I lot of words. I've never been that condescended. Never. We have failed in some ways, Oscar. Yes, we have. But the way that she'd tell it, we set fire to Amulta and threw a party for Yovance. Yeah. We are laying important groundwork for a happier future for both nations. Yes, we are. As far as I'm concerned, there is only one important Isaac sister. I know. What I would suggest is that in my experience, when a superior officer speaks with you in that way, pokes at you in that way, it is meant to be endearment. It doesn't always come across that way, and Firstly, I am not trying to excuse Oscar, the behavior. She is not my superior. I know. Socially. What I am suggesting is that, although she probably didn't mean it that way, it can clearly be seen that it wasn't taken well. Maybe communicate with her. 
She Fair. bit with purpose. I did communicate with her. I will not be Fair enough. subject to her company again. Fair enough. You will Fair have enough. all of the dealings that is with fine. Krilla from now on. She that takes you seriously and she thinks of me as a whore. <sighs> a fuck up whore who dates her sister. Then she under underestimates you entirely. She does. I won't have it. Well, it might be to your benefit at some point. Well, I think we're all allowed our boundaries, and this is I one agree. of mine. If there's anything I can do to help reinforce it, let me know. You can tell her that she's wrong. Fair enough. I don't like to boast, but I could have. I know. Chris Ellen, you know I've seen how you are. You know that I've been on the road with you for ages. You don't have to boast with me for me to be willing to sing your praises to someone who doesn't see it, right? I'm you know very I'm going to be frustrated happy. that all of our victories were undermined by a few small failings on the road to something greater than our initial purpose. I don't care that she wouldn't have chosen us. We were chosen. And we are doing a goddamn good job. That's why I ignored her repeating that several times. And that's why it annoyed her that she repeated it three times. Because I just completely disregarded it and continued on with the point of getting the facts that she has and making the most of the situation. That probably pissed her off quite a bit. I don't care for her. I won't speak with her. You can handle her. She likes you. Fair enough. After all, you're not a whore who dates her sister and fucks up. Well, you are one of those things. Ah, <sighs> and when I wed her sister one day... You'll be none of those things. It will be sweeter than the wedding cake to see the look on her face. I think by then, she might even not underestimate you. She might estimate you. That's not how that word works. Get where are you coming from? I'm Over. a little bit drunk, presently. She's gone. Damn it. Oh. Uh, Don't I worry. I think more. you really convinced her about that shadow magic, Laszlo. Um. <laughs> All right. Failed again. Now I'll close the closet door. <laughs> I wasn't tapping for no reason. There was a knock at the door. Oh, I did not hear you tapping. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there was no yeah. tap, bro. Yeah, there you was no tap. The it's probably because jo Josh is so loud. Mm. I, well, <laughs> Oscar will kind of look at the door, look back at the at the futon and be like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> He'll walk back over to the door and open the I door. I will slip into my room quietly. You open up the door, and you see a, uh, a gentleman standing there. Uh, he's dressed very posh. His back is straight. He's looking rather regal. He has um, uh, a bit of like a, a dirty brown hair to him. Um, and he says, uh, good evening. How are you doing tonight? Doing well, thank you. And you? Well, up much later than I uh, cared to this evening, but nonetheless, when duty calls, excuse me, he says as he goes to push past you. Oscar lets him in. Uh, does this guy appear to be a threat in any way, shape, or form? Doesn't, no. I mean, honestly, okay. he, he the way he moves, everything about him is screams yeah. to you that he's most likely a caster. It's just because gotcha. you have an eye for those kind of details. It's literally yep. what you're trained for. But yep. um, but you're pretty sure if he went to speak, you could hit him in the throat pretty quick. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. In that case, Oscar will close, like, let him in and, and close the door behind him and, and just say, uh, and you are? Excuse me. It should smell of whiskey in here. It's not the whiskey that I'm concerned about. Oh, and vomit. And yeah. one of our companions, unfortunately, drank a little bit too much of the whiskey. I hope they're feeling better now. I believe partially. Good. Are you ready for travel? Tristan, I assume then. Uh, yes. That was much faster than we expected. Um, 
I, from what I was told that you are looking to get to a few locations rather quickly. It's needed to, um, time is of the essence. Indeed. How quickly can you aid us in getting to a location? A small little uh, curl goes up on the side of his lip. He gets this like, mm -hmm. kind of cocky look to him. Yeah. God, a cocky look we all know. Uh -huh. I know so exactly what he's doing. Yeah. Well. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> he has a cocky look to him. And, um, and he says, I guess you're going to have to find out. Well, it's we're all best. rather... Moment. So now is probably not the best time to travel, but... <sighs> we must, we must. Um... <clears throat> Chriselin's kind of fine. Yeah, she's... Chriselin's... Like, she's... She's drunk, but she's not, like, drunk. You know what I mean? It's one of those... It's one of those drunks where you're arguing with yourself, mm. should I drive or should I die? And the answer is always no. But you're arguing with yourself, was... like, should I... She was drunk enough that she wasn't putting up with uh, yeah. the governess's bullshit. Yeah. Like, sober Chris Ellen would have dealt with it. She yeah. grabbed the cheeks and been like, ah. Yeah. No. I, I, got, I got it. Yep. <laughs> she does. She like, rubs um, her nose in it. <sighs> I got yeah, you. Uh, Oscar's a, a bit. Oscar's a bit drunk, but he's not like, he's not bad. This is just more drunk than he's been in a while. That's just trying to get to normal. Lazlo's not vomiting did anymore. The, did the healing magic not do anything for him? It's uh, a poison. It's yes, it's, it doesn't quite work. Like yeah, yeah. Hmm. but but that's okay, Doxy. Um, he's not vomiting anymore. He just feels like he's just yeah. I yeah. feel like shit. Yeah, weak and hey, probably thirsty as hell, but don't want to drink air, anything. Cold night air might help him out. Cold night air is fucking phenomenal when you're yeah. too drunk. Uh, cold. Tristan, cold if you if you wait here yeah. for a moment, yeah, cold air, yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. You've never experienced Floridian. It. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, because <laughs> you've actually been to my house, so I'm like, yeah, cold air, like tonight. Like, what's the temperature tonight? It's probably different in Boston, but hold on. Like it's 70. fifty. It's like fifty three or something like that. Uh, it's actually sixty one. That's warm out. Let's go for that's a walk. Balmy. Right yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Let's like let's like go for a walk in the middle of the night and try the night sky. So chat, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna be able to be in this campaign anymore. Um, I, I we differences in opinion. Um, no, <laughs> listen, listen. Sometime in the near future, when we know that we're going to be canceling a session, you need to come over before it gets too cold out, and you can actually sit by the fire and have some drinks and relax. You know? Why are you giving me funny faces? Before, my new apartment before has your a daughter fireplace. is born. Before your daughter is born. Otherwise, you're going to be hands down. You're the busy one, bro. Not me. <laughs> so... Somebody's going to cancel a session for you to come hang out. That's all. I can't make it next week. Shut up, Doxy. <laughs> Uh, it's okay. Just uh, lost initiative. We'll take care of that. Oh, side, that is not side. true. <laughs> that is not true. The, the now wait, wait, Pat. <laughs> wait, wait, and Pat, don't cancel ever. I might not be able to make a session in the next two weeks, so uh, that, that is a thing. Because I, we'll I, go so without I without you. That, well, please do. Uh, the, <laughs> the, because I, I kind of hinted at this before, but I'm, I'm looking at moving. Um, so I, I might be moving in that time. So. It's, your, it's your third time I mentioned it this evening. Yeah. I've had to repeat myself three times, Scott, and you're not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. Dude. You jumped will. right into that act. You jumped right into it. <laughs> I'm buzzing. See, Doxy, he's funny because he admonishes me. You know what I mean? You have to be mean to me, Doxy. <laughs> it's you how Bostonians show funny. love. What? You don't think I'm funny? That's not what I said. You talked about two weeks ago the the reason why I got a, he got a big laugh out of me and there's the conversation about because it catches me off guard. If you were mean to me, that would completely catch you off guard. So I couldn't. It can't happen tonight because I wouldn't expect it. But no, you've done it before. You gave me sass one time really hard on Li, and it killed me. Okay. I don't remember. Oh, I do. It was while we we're playing Star Wars, obviously. But, anyways. That was a good game. That was a good game. Yeah, it, it was actually. I loved that campaign. It's a really good crew. It was a really good crew. Oh my. Right. Oh well. Let's we get go. it back. It won't come back. And it won't be the same. It won't feel the same. Yeah. What happened?
Moving on. So, um, yeah, it's totally get Mass Effects going again with Derp Digital and um, and uh, w- Rookie Wookie. And, Wookie uh, Rookie, yeah. I love Rookie. She's awesome. She was own. so quiet, though. Like, when you watch the, P- the, the recordings, it I was, was also, so hard I d- to understand. I didn't know what I was doing back then, either. Yeah. yeah. Kyle. No, Sal, go away. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle. Kyle sucked. Couldn't even pilot. Threw people out into space for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Oh, 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 no. <laughs> Just to the melody of there's a place in France where the naked ladies dance. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, Josh, awesome welcome if you came back. back. With the space for a background, that would have been. <laughs> On fleek, children. I was gonna do the face, but I can't see myself in the. <laughs> you do that. You put me in that. You put me in purgatory. At least I'm not eating slime. This face. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That may... Oh wait, wait. This time it's yes. Avalor. Yes. <laughs> All right. Doctor so... Manhattan over there. <laughs> oh Jesus! Whatever he's doing is frightening me. <laughs> he's doing the pumpkin. The. <laughs> <laughs> Josh has got it, yeah. There you go. Listen, you guys can't get mad about Kyle. Kyle was right from session one. I did not know he the was. plot, and I was right was. from session one. Okay. He really was. God damn it. I was like, I smell what's going on here. I know, Mike. I know what's happening. Gah! <laughs> All right, yeah, I hated you. your second character, that redneck, oh. whatever dude. Oh, listen. That was punishment. I know. I know you made. You did. A, you did a crayon, a crayon, or whatever. <laughs> you didn't air it. You made a character, a character to piss off Mike. No, no, no. It wasn't piss off Mike. It was to get Maggie back. It was. Like, I know. I can't even do the voice at the moment. But it's like, if I find me a drawer that I don't darn like, I'm gonna get it dead in a shop. Just one. I can't do it. Damn it. I'm missing it. That's fine. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No, uh, it gets the feel. You guys get the feel of it. It was that bad. Would you like any last words, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> sorry, all right. All right, let's get back to the session. Sorry, 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 sorry. So should I do the rest of the uh, session on an Irish accent, or is that a little bit too much? It's too much. Hey, too much? A little too much? Too all much. Right. Oh, all right. Um, uh, when well, we get you into, uh, into a space campaign, I want you to play an Irishman on the on the ship. You know, or a Scotchman. Or a Scot. Yeah. All right. I could do either. Oh, Whatever Jesus. Uh, that sounds actually more Irish. That actually sounds even that, more Irish. This, this one is a little bit Northern England, actually. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> that's, a, that's a Newcastle. But that's all right. I like Newcastle. It's a decent beer. But the fact they that they can't ship do it, it anymore. They, they changed the, they changed the uh, formula, and now I just taste syrupiness. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, scratch that. But they always yeah. served it in a, in, a, in a clear bottle, and I don't know if you know this, but there's a reason why beer is inside of a, a brown bottle. Light sensitive. Hmm, yeah. It's actually gr- green. Green is a funny bottle, too, because uh, the kind of light that uh, that actually hurts beer, green bottles don't stop, which is why Heineken always smells like shit and tastes like shit. Um, but clear bottles like Corona and Newcastle spoil in a hot second, which, by the way, Corona's nasty anyways. But anyways, why aren't we playing D&D? Let's get back to this. I mean, we got nine minutes left, bro. Yeah, but it's important <laughs> to establish the lore. So here's the lore. I've been trying to keep us on track all night, man. And I'm always the one that gets us off track. I blame, uh, he, I blame missed, he missed us. He missed us. It's That's always what is. happens when you skip a week. Whenever we miss a week, yeah. Yeah. Just sitting it's, there, like just... petting your faces, like oh, oh not Josh, it's greasy. I'm petting their faces. It is. It is. I'm never gonna wash this. I, I actually, it. that's what I use. That's what I use for lotion. Just grease. Just pizza should. pizza I slices. Cold. I'm just like pepperoni on my <laughs> face all the time. Oh, God, what a terrible thing. <laughs> I actually take very good care of my skin. I try to, anyways. I don't. If you can see how ashy, <laughs> if you here, let's see if I can zoom up how, exactly how ashy I am. Let's I mean, you guys you saw his that? pants, yeah. right? With the ashy in Discord. That is like, ashy. That's like yeah. gross ashy. Like that's uh, like. You, you need to moisturize, bud. Yeah, <laughs> my knuckles like crack and bleed all winter long. Wait, and you're the one that gave buddy. people shit for using chapstick? 
Oh, I hate chapstick. <laughs> chapstick chap is my gross. skin. Guys, is my skin nice and clear? Listen, my How wife... come your teeth and your eyes don't stand out? <laughs> My, my, so my wife came home from work today, and as soon as she walked in the door, I went over to her and I gave her a kiss. And immediately after, I was like, ugh, use chapstick. Nasty. And she's like, sorry. <laughs> like, so gross. Like, lipstick, chapstick, lip balm, all those. Bleh. So, lip gloss. But, moving on. Why aren't we playing d, &D? I blame Josh. <laughs> Josh, you're going to do it. I'm going to do it, oh. Josh. We're gonna do it. We'll never, we'll no, never no, get no, back on no, track no, if you do it. No, no. Right. <laughs> well, that works. Uh, so what are we? What are we doing? Oh, Tristan showed up. Right. Oop, wrong one. Uh, um, so he showed up, and he's yeah. and you you say I'm not in a good. Uh, we're, not, we're kind of a little drunk right now for traveling, and then he like rubbed your eyes. Yeah. Let me go and grab the others and see where we're at and whether or not we're packed, ready to go. We did unpack to stay the night here. Oh, God. Uh, um, and o Oscar's going to go and, and check in with Chris Ellen and, and just knock lightly on the closet where Laszlo is. Chris Ellen, I'm sure you heard most, if not all, of that conversation. Yeah, she already packed her bag. Yeah, it, Oscar was mostly just coming over as a formality. <laughs> he knows. But, you, you, uh, just, you don't even knock. You just walk in the door. Yeah. She's currently pulling up like her hose. And you're, you're like... So, ready for travel? I am. Yeah. Oscar's gonna walk over to Laszlo and open up the closet. Uh, is Laszlo just like face down, butt up? Uh, no, I'm done throwing up. I'm just like trying not to die. Face down, ass I'm up. the way I like to. All right. I'm just trying not to die looking up into the, the mm. darkness and just go, yeah. You good to travel? Uh, it'd be nice to get some fresh air. This room stinks. Uh, Oscar's gonna turn to Tristan and say, "Are we going to be getting fresh air during this travel?" Uh, you um, uh, air won't be a concern. Oh man, if we're gonna teleport, he's gonna make me throw up again. <laughs> he's gonna make me do another check. Good enough for Oscar. All right. <laughs> It's I grab my one bag. Yeah, Oscar just... <laughs> well, o Oscar goes and quickly cleans the glasses that they used. Um, I leave the bucket in the closet. <laughs> I am. Don't, don't open I that closet. I toss a couple of uh, gold coins on the sitting room table. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I mean, after I clean the glasses, I'm going to put the remaining... I'm assuming that I probably have one out of my two casks left of whiskey based on that amount that was had but not even a full one probably like maybe about three quarters of a cask left so i'm gonna put that in my bag um and uh then yeah uh you don't put it in your over. bag you like strap it to the bag well yeah yeah you know what i mean but yeah. in in my stuff sloshing it's... around now behind you because it's not full anymore it's like oh you're yeah. supposed to finish it when you open it like like like, like like um v uh russian vodka the bottle's not meant to close after you open it. Well, like, this is like, it's got a stopper, and this stopper is definitely jammed in there because Oscar is strong and not because it was supposed to go back in there. Um, so. Okay. It says, oh. wonderful. Um, could you please douse all the lights in the room? Laszlo, are you excited? For what? Shadows. And Oscar's going to douse all the lights in the room. There are no shadows. Um, it's just impolite to leave things like uh, lights on when you're leaving a room for the evening. Uh, candles aren't exactly free. No, they are not. And you douse all the lights in the room? Mm-hmm. And uh, moments after you douse the lights in the room, he says, we should probably get leaving. We should, we should, we should, we should probably head out. And um, shortly after, like a mo couple moments later, you hear like a spark. And you see that a single candle is lit. That single candle, for those of you that have the ability to see in dimmer light, I think that's just Yay. Laszlo. Just Laszlo. Not me. You looking up can make a perception check. The DC is not low for you since I'm not hitting you with modifiers. I'm just going to increase the DC. Because you're drunk. Ooh. You want to stunt that? Yeah, I don't mean stunt that. I mean luck that? No. No. Okay. 
You don't really make up the details. You just see that he has a candle in his hand that got lit. Just what they say. Um, mm -hmm. So he's holding the candle and says, um, we should make our way to the door. I look back at the room, look back at the closet, and like with a, like a, oh, I feel bad for the cleaning lady. I'm going to cast this and then I'll walk out the room <laughs> to clean up after oh, me. Imagine the movie Fantasia, but with vomit. <laughs> Oh, no, I hate that. <laughs> Wait, isn't this Fantasia's 100 year anniversary or 50 year anniversary or some shit? Not 100, 50 year anniversary or some shit? No, um, it's only a minute, Joey. Um, so anyways, uh, what was it going to go? So yeah, yeah, you, you, and then you, who walks over to open the door? Oscar will. So Oscar reaches over and grabs the handle and he says, Oscar, a moment. Mm. Um, and then he actually... Holding the candle out before him, he starts to say some words and starts to um, uh, hold the thing out. As he holds the candle out, he holds it higher and higher in the air. As he holds it higher and higher, you can see that each one of your shadows starts to stretch further and further and more and more and further. Yeah, and this more. is what I would That would say. definitely get my attention that's, at that point. That's awesome. That trying to pay attention as well, actually, on that. So I'm going to roll an arcane lore as well. Do you want to luck that? Shits and giggles. I want to luck mine. Oh, I want to luck her. Oscar should luck his. Yeah. He's I'm thinking, better than you. His DC's lower since he doesn't. I'm, he's not drunk yeah, like you. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, but I get extra things for lore. It's a whole trait I have. I mean, hold on. Here's the question. How many luck that we have? We have one left. Oh, All right, go ahead. You do it. You sure? You do it. Yeah. Okay. Your number is higher, just flat out. 21. Not only is his number higher, his uh, his stunt die is much higher, too. Um, So, yeah, you realize all of a sudden that there is, um, that he's casting a spell, clearly casting a spell. Like, there's no, it's, it's obvious that he's saying some sort of incantation as he's holding the candle, but you can also literally see not just your shadow stretching as what normally happens or the cabinet shadow stretching as it normally happens and the light is a uh, uh, change in the direction that's held and the way it's casting shadows and blah, blah, blah. You can literally feel the room itself starting to get darker, starting to stretch. Everything here feels like it's just starting to pull and twist. And you're listening to the words that he's saying and you realize this is definitely a type of a Maltese magic that you have never heard of before the the language he's speaking the words he's using it sounds similar to the sounds that you've heard a Maltese magic use in the past which generally they, they use some language of primordial right mm -hmm. but you can't quite make out what he's saying no that that word was ignan no that word was Terran it's like a blend of different languages it's strange but with other words thrown in it too that you definitely have no idea the origin or meaning so on and so forth so one thing I would note is as soon as, like, part of his, like, perking up an awareness to this, it would have been smacking Laszlo to pay attention. Like, literally smacking him sober is the idea. Um, as much as possible to try and get Laszlo to pay attention to these words and to pay attention to... I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Can I spell? <laughs> no, don't do that. Oh. <laughs> I do good? <laughs> no but so so like he would yeah he would try to smack Laszlo to pay attention like to pay close attention to those words and remember those words essentially so so listen what you remember because you got some vague training in your Venator uh, training blah, mm -hmm. blah 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 is that you know that there's this world and you know that in theory at least there's other worlds that exist out there it's planes is what they're called and the way to the inner planes is traversed through something called the ethereal it's where like I guess ghosts or something like that uh, you are believed to live because yeah. unfortunately they crop up from time to time. It's very, 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 very rare outside of, the, uh, outside of the barren lands, but yeah. it has happened in history. So yeah. there's an, a, a, a very loose and brief understanding of, of what the ethereal plane is, but this isn't that this is something else. This is, stretching and twisting as everything is getting darker and darker and grayer and grayer until eventually you realize this is not Kansas anymore, Toto, right? Like you're not mm. in the material plane anymore. 
you don't know exactly where you are because you just don't understand this stuff, right? Yeah. But with your, excuse me, 21 and six stunt dice, you do know that you're definitely in another plane of existence. But what's crazy about what you see is that it looks like you're still in the material plane. It looks like you're still in the room that you were in before, but everything is elongated and twisted and sharp looking. Like, you know, uh, uh, like, uh, like how Tim Burtonified. Yeah. yeah. Tim, Tim Burton yeah. effect. Burr, burr, burr. I was going to say, I'm, I'm just picturing Coraline, uh, uh much to much, much to Rena's dismay. I'm sure when she eventually watches this, what, Rena does <laughs> like Coraline. Rena, Rena gets creeped out by Coraline. She's like 35 years old. How does she not like Coraline? I've never even seen Coraline. Oh, you should. It's, it's the Halloween it's, season. You should totally watch it. It's an enjoyable film. It, it's, it's one of the few creepy. good Tim Burton movies in, in the past 20 years. Because anyways. Tim Burton is Tim Burton in another movie, unfortunately. Um, so, anyways. Um, yeah, who does Johnny Depp play in it? Uh, <laughs> uh, huh. Actually, I don't think he has a role, but I'm probably wrong. I, I Not that I'm aware of, but he might be. Hold on. Let me, let like, me look uh, it up. What movie did I just see recently with Helena Bonham Carter in it? Oh, it was um, uh, Enola... Enola, uh, Enola um, Holmes uh, was a movie I just saw like not too long ago. And again, Helena Bonham Carter was awesome in it because it wasn't a Tim Burton movie. Uh, so no, he was not in Coraline. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Thank you. As, as rare as that is for yeah. him with Tim Burton movies. Helena Bonham Carter, by the way. Er, fucking, oh my God. <laughs> Helena Bonham Carter? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She is a fucking queen. Oh, I love her. I love her except in Tim Burton movies, except in most Tim Burton movies, because then she's just Helen Bonham Carter in another Tim Burton movie. Weren't uh, they, like, married for a hot minute? Yeah. Uh, I think they are still technically, but, like, live in houses across the street or some weird shit. I, I don't know. I really don't care about their <laughs> weirdness. They're weird people, but they make great films separately. So, um, uh, you, sir... Um, uh, you witness watching literally things stretch out and because of the, you, you rolled there you have a very keen understanding of exactly what's happening it feels like you're still in the material plane it feels like you're still home like the world looks the same about you never mind the fact that the floor is tilted and everything feels off kilter and you feel like you have to hold your weight strange and whatnot you to yourself to your own perspective you look like you to your own perspective they look like them those that traversed here with you, but the world around you is weird. And here's the craziest part. When he says, Oscar, you may open the door now. And you reach out and you grab the door and you open it, which again is a fun house looking door. It is freakish. Um, when you take your first step into the hallway, as your leg steps forward, you realize it's not just your leg that steps forward. The shadow of your leg steps so much further than your leg actually does. And when it plants its foot and you pull your next foot uh, forward, you like almost like a slingshot being released, like elastic band being released. You get pulled these incredible distances. Like what you expect is a step like, uh, I, don't, I don't know, like two feet or something like that, whatever your gait might be. Uh, a semi-cautious step, let's say it's two feet forward. You actually end up stepping closer, like 25 feet forward. It was like, whoa, as you, you, you come to realize like that was not what you expected. It completely throws you off guard, but most importantly, with your role, you understand it. You have a keen understanding that your shadow is what you're watching where the foot falls, not your actual feet themselves. In this world, your physical manifestation of yourself might not actually be physical, but simply a mental manifestation of yourself to keep yourself sane in a world where everything is two-dimensional and weird. Laszlo doesn't understand this because as soon as he takes a step forward, the rush of air and everything around him is so fucking weird. With a 17, a 17, bro. Come on, You're bro. Very, listen, I wasn't the one that filled two of these up. Oh, and the I thought I was being clever and I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. Once you're sober, Oscar will share all of that with you. I don't want it from secondhand sources. <laughs> uh, it makes me think of an of a, a Italian um, historian I used to love listening to. I should probably go back to him. Where he's like, from the primary sources. Like, yeah. uh, anyways. I'm sorry, um, Josh. It's okay. It's, it's fine. It's not. 
It's fine. I've whatever. emotionally it's tarnished our relationship goal. and will <laughs> never recover. What's but you know, it, it, you know, it's just, it's just a stain on our soul. I'm gonna let my cat out since time doesn't matter and everything's a mess. And make sure you step where your shadow goes. That's okay. She's going to go let the cat out. And we can actually, I was going to say, with that being said, we can actually start our outros. <laughs> so, um, yeah. um, why don't we, um, oh, first I do want to point out, uh, uh, Lundane says a compliment about the Corvains. And so, uh, gets a gift sub. So I thought that was funny because there's a Rayward apologist doing it. But, um, why don't we start with Josh? Since you barely got to say anything this entire session, who are you? How can that I find you? That was the point. That was the point. I was getting up a lot. Anyways, <clears throat> I am a funny one. I'm a variety streamer. Come check me out. I play games and I'm looking forward to moving into my new apartment where I'm going to have a uh, gigabyte internet and I'll actually be able to run D&D games and stuff again and not cut out every time I say something that is important. Um... I'm Darn it! I was trying to—I was trying to be funny, but it didn't work out. I screwed everything up. I'm sorry. That's—that's that's me. So keep my going. friends down here are working on a cool game. Ask them about it. No, hold on. So, so obviously you're moving into the beginning of the month, which is in two plus weeks. When do you yep. think you'll be able to be? Just because this is important for everybody that wants to actually watch your channel and whatnot. Um, uh, when do you think you'll be set up with your whole rig actually put into a location? Next day. Internet? Next day. Next day? You think like November 2nd, November 3rd? Uh, I think November 1st because I'm getting the keys on the Friday before. Oh. So I'm going to start setting up. Oh, that's amazing. So. So listen, if you're going to be depressed on election day, which is November 3rd, don't forget to vote. Um, you can always watch Josh stream that day because he's totally going to stream all day nonstop. Right, Josh? Ah, to, to, oh, ah, to cheer you up. There you go. Yeah. He yeah, sure. He, he talks sure. more on his channel, I promise. <laughs> I do talk a lot. I do talk a lot. No comment. Anyways, ask them. Uh, you're pointing at Oscar, so I guess we might as well go to Oscar. Oscar, you're making a game. What's it called? Uh, yeah, so we're making Schism, uh, which is a very, very fun, I'm biased, obviously we're making it, but it's a very fun uh, tabletop skirmisher, which is an introductory tabletop war game meant to be kind of a stepping stone between strategy games like Risk or uh, Settlers of Catan up to war games like Warhammer, which are far more involved. Uh, this is meant to be somewhere in the middle where you can still play a game in about half an hour. Um, but you're getting that depth of strategy and that cool like war game feel to it with some very cool minis. For example, uh, this is one of the prototype ones that we made. This is actually a small prototype. We have uh, larger prototypes that are going to be the actual size. So this is this is my giant hand. This is the tiny mini. It's going to be slightly larger than this tiny mini, um, which uh, it's very exciting. We're making that. Uh, we're looking at an early 2021 Kickstarter launch. Uh, that timing may shift depending on... Um, depending on some personal life stuff for our uh, for our team um, just uh, a lot of health things going on for, for uh, well several of us and then uh, a lot of personal life stuff going on for for a few of us as well so we're figuring out timing we're figuring out dates we're also currently uh, working with some uh, some outside sources that we're trying to hammer down timing wise including getting some prototypes done but this is kind of details that none of you need to know, except for the reason why I was saying that was mostly for you, Scott, because once we do get those, I will send you a copy so that you and Josh can sit down and play and show it off a bit. Um, but that's what we're doing. We're making a, a board game. You can check it out at arcanistentertainment.com. Uh, our social medias have been quiet for the moment, um, but we will be kind of picking up over time as we are leading up to launch. So uh, follow us on those and you'll be able to check stuff out there's also some cool information on the first set of minis on the website uh, including some gifts of those minis if you want to see them with a little bit more detail uh that's me but now for the coolest person in the call uh, hi doxy doxy oh, oh. Yeah. stop yeah. it I will never. <laughs> hi I'm zero doxy I um I'm a disgusting piece of human filth uh, but I do run the Twitch team, the Dirty 20 Collective. It is growing currently. We, uh, I mission... just joined today. Yeah. Our mission is to always have tabletop content for you to watch on the go. 
Uh, and you can check me out at twitch.tv forward slash Z-E-R zero D-O-X-Y every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have a tabletop game. Um, the times vary because we are not very established just yet, but um, there's a lot of fun ways that you can be involved with what goes on the channel. Uh, if you want to head over there right now, you could look at the panels underneath. Um, and hopefully, hopefully Scott and I will be doing some more stuff together soon and not just hang out on Thursdays. It's all very up in the air. We're both super busy all the time, but, uh, regardless, we're part of a team now at least. So that's fun and nice. Uh, also if you like, if you, if you like paying $15 a month to look at naked ladies, I do that. So you could, you could do that. Oh, who else is naked? It's just me. Oh, see, see, <laughs> unless, now. unless cats count as naked because they show up from time to time. There you go. Uh, now, now, now you could do a, like a Photoshop where it's like you with you. It's like that's double not doxing, a bad plan. Right? That's double not doxing? a bad plan. Like that, that, that's like this at $15. And you if get I could make out with anybody in the world, it would be this bitch right here. <laughs> that one might be a little bit hard to Photoshop. I mean, <laughs> be a little <laughs> difficult. Doable. It'd definitely have to be a freeze frame, maybe? I mean, you, you're going to have to do, if you're planning on making a video, it'll have to be stop motion. Realistically, with like, I mean, there are there are genuine, grommet porn. <laughs> there are ways to do it. I'm just saying. Anyway, oh, I'm not overtly pornographic. It's no, more no, like no, flirty girlfriend that's, style. That's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That's I was referring to you. I was referring. Yeah, to no, no, no. <laughs> stop, stop motion making out though. Also, very weird to watch. I just I, know. Now I want to see it. Like, I just know that if that might I be my kink. Sorry. Encountered. <laughs> a clone of me in the wild we would just lock eyes walk toward each other paying attention to nothing else and immediately start making out i All just right. know that Listen, i just know that I want how everybody to understand you have been given a mission a mission should you choose to accept it your mission should you choose to accept it is to search all of twitter for doxy's doppelgangers <laughs> and at doxy their names and at them doxy's name and let's just see what magic we can make happen by the way scott i got you covered i got some videos coming your way no <laughs> stop <laughs> motion <laughs> making out oh, wait. i got you bro what did i ask for? anyway that's me <laughs> da -na 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 -na. Now for the second coolest person in this call scott oh there we're back to josh no, no I'm, not, I'm not cool. I'm not cool. Really? I'm that lame nerd Josh, friend Josh that people I, like. But... Josh and I aren't on the cool spectrum. We're on the hot spectrum. I don't know why this is a question. No, so no, Doxy I'm... is the antithesis of hot? Is that what you're saying? She's the coolest, which is also hot in its own way. You're in the lukewarm section. I'm sorry to say, Scott. <laughs> Scott's in the basement. He is in the basement. <laughs> and so am I. Hi, my name is uh, <laughs> Messi Was Taken. Yeah, you can find me on Twitch at Messi Was Taken. And, um, I wish I could mute you right now. That would be real good. It would be real good. Put on a Santa hat. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> no. Um, sorry. Where was I? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you already here. You already know the shit here. Wait, blah, blah. Lost Initiative. Session one of the new campaign is this upcoming Wednesday. This upcoming Wednesday. I'm very excited. I just got emotes sent to me today. We're going to get them uploaded tonight. They probably get approved in the next 24 hours, which is nice. Um, uh, and, and you know, we'll see. I'm, I'm having other stuff made right now. Uh, overlay I'm hoping to have by tomorrow evening. I'm very excited again. So let's see what happens. Let's see how the campaign goes. Uh, very interesting people playing. Uh, probably not the best cast I can get my hands on. I'm slumming it a little bit. I don't have awesome people like Will and Doxy. Uh, instead, I have to hang out with people like uh, Wade, Pat, and Rena and Messy. If that doesn't, if Messy doesn't tell you alone, like that's 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 that's. Those are honestly all delightful people. Oh God, I, I was on a call. I was on a call with Messi earlier, and um, uh, Britt was like, "Oh, uh, what's Messi's real name?" I was like, "Oh, it's Neil." She goes, "Oh, okay, cool. Tell Neil I said hi." Like, Absolutely. <laughs> if you don't get the meme, I'm sorry, but oh boy. So Scott, 
Do you give permission to anybody that might be a player on your new campaign on this channel to go on to the podcast with Van? Wait, what? Van's podcast yeah, for I... Aurorum. Do you give permission for the people, whoever they are, uh, player-wise, to go on to the podcast? You said it was a new, the, 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 the Aurorum's fourth The campaign? pirate, the pirate campaign. The pirate yeah. campaign? Yeah, yeah, I give permission for those people, or, or even the people that are in current campaigns. Okay, that so really they can announce that they're in the new campaign, or no, 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 no. Oh, I would, I, would, I would care if they did, yeah. They can announce themselves. There you go, it's out there, Van. Use it. Clip it, use it. <laughs> yeah, they can announce who they are. That's fine. I mean, I think it's funny that Messi didn't announce already. Actually, did you catch that? Uh, uh, the unofficial Erothian spoiler cast podcast, the most recent one? Massey is hilarious. So, just saying. Yeah, he's flirting. Him, so. Everybody, have yourselves a great night. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Doxy, for gracing us with your uh, w w with your presence. Oh. I know it's difficult for you to rise from the grave and um, sit yourself before such a brilliant lights, but um, but y y your suffering is appreciated. Also, that looks fucking delicious, and I've been meaning to say so it. Awesome. It's so fucking awesome. What is it? Fudge brownie. So good. I'm in heaven. I'm it PMSing, so, so this is amazing. I mean, that's just ideal. But like, I, you know, I mean, I, I don't do heavy sweets like that. Like, and I, I just don't have that much as a sweet tooth. But the idea of it is so enticing. <laughs> it looks good. It looks really. I'm good. I'm enjoying it very much. Yeah. If if you, if you wanna if you wanna um uh send me some, I I'd, I'd, I'd take them. <laughs> Okay, never mind. Never, never mind. You know what? Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll find somebody to raid. Good night, everybody. Let's go raid Gumby MMA. Gumby's a wicked cool person. Also a good friend of Pat and Wade's. I got to hang out with Gumby a couple of times now. He's very funny and all of those other things. Please show him love when we raid. Uh, say whatever you want. I, I, I No specific raid message. Definitely toss a follow. Uh, I'm sure you'll appreciate the content that he creates. He is a variety streamer, to be clear, not a D&D streamer. Though I have talked to him about maybe doing D&D &D games in the future. So maybe sometime in the distant future and totally not a pirate campaign coming up. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Goodbye. <laughs>